What up, guys? Welcome to episode four of the $1,000 Kawasaki Ninja 650 rebuild series. So if you missed the previous episodes, in episode one, I bought a Ninja 650 that was basically brand new. It had only 200 miles on it for about 1000 bucks US. And in the episodes after that, I replaced the battery, I made some discoveries, I got the bike to fire up, even though it had a security system on it that I did not have the key fob for, and drained, refilled the gas tank, all kinds of good stuff. So if you haven't seen those already, I will post some links probably in the description box down below. Uh, for you guys to check those out. But right now I got the bike, the bike fires up, it runs great, but just because we can fire up the bike doesn't mean we should fire up the bike because it has some really old and dark oil in there. So today I'm going to show you guys how to replace the oil and the filter on a Kawasaki Ninja 650 and then I'll be one step closer to having this bike actually you know back and ready to be on the road and back for action. Oil changes are actually pretty easy, you can usually do them in about seven easy steps. So while I'm setting up I'm going to talk to you guys about what you'll need to get this job done. The first thing you're going to need is about 1.9 liters, so basically 2 liters of 10W40 semi-synthetic or full synthetic motorcycle oil. You can use either synthetic or semi-synthetic on this bike. If you're going to be going crazy and taking it to the track, go full synthetic. For most street use, I say a semi-synthetic is totally fine. The oil filter for this bike is a KN138. Those are great oil filters. That's the one I use. That's what I recommend for you guys too. You'll need a torque wrench. I'm going to get into what a torque wrench is and why it's better than a regular wrench a little bit later. Some hex keys, this is just for taking the fairings off the bike. Some people say you need to do it, some people say you don't. I took them off and I think it's something that you should get good at if this is a bike you plan on keeping for a while anyway. Uh, flathead, screwdriver or knife. Some gloves, basic stuff you're going to want for when you're doing an oil change on any bike. And of course something to pour the oil into in a way of getting rid of the oil afterwards. Okay, so now that all that talking's done. The first thing you want to do is loosen your lower fairings. I've already started doing that as you can see in the video here. It's not always necessary, but like I said, it'll probably save you some time. There's some clips that are on the inner part of the fairings you're going to want to unclip, and there's also some clips that are running down the center of the bike, down the middle, and you can go ahead and use a flathead screwdriver to try and pry those out, uh, and uh, hex keys for the other bolts. Step two. You want to start with the bike's engine being warm, and we're going to remove the oil cap and the drain bolt. So your bike's oil needs to be warmed up so it'll flow out more easily, so that's why before you do this you're going to want to have the bike running for a little bit just to warm things up so it's not cold but not so hot that you might actually burn yourself so only a couple minutes should be more than adequate. From this point on all work on your bike I'm assuming you're working with your bike in a totally vertical straight up position not on a side stand so you need to use some kind of motorcycle lift or jack or stand or I've done reviews of a $89 wheel chalk that'll even work if you're in a pinch. Anyway the oil cap is on the right side of the bike you just unscrew that that's where you pull that's where you'll pull pour oil in later the drain bolt is underneath the motor it's the part that sticks out the lowest under the bike you'll need a little wrench or bit for that and something to catch your oil no the oil drain plug also has its own special washer the washer might fall into your oil so you might have to poke around once you've drained that oil out to grab the washer if you kind of lost track of it and if it poured out like that. Step three, remove your oil filter. While the oil is draining, you can remove your oil filter using either an adjustable oil filter wrench or if your bike uses a KN oil filter, a 17 millimeter bit. You can get the oil filter with the fairing still on, but it might be a little bit annoying. Unfortunately for me, this part really sucked. The oil filter was stuck to the bike and I tried to take it off with every filter and wrench combination that I had and nothing worked. Whoever did this oil change on this bike last, it was either way too long ago or it just, they really did a bad job. So I finally had to just drill through the filter to get some leverage so that I could loosen it before I can go the rest of the way with an adjustable oil wrench. That's actually the last time I used an adjustable filter wrench. Like I'm gonna link to all of this stuff so you can grab it, but what I use now, I have a 33 piece set it has a different specific wrench for every single size of oil filter out there. Um, it was like, I think 55 bucks instead of 10 bucks for something generic, but it saves me so much time now and no matter what condition these filters are in, it, it works great. Anyway, enough about that. Step four is replace the oil drain plug and the washer. So once all the oil has stopped pouring out of your Ninja 650, you can put the oil drain plug, don't forget the washer, back into your bike. There's a torque spec for your Ninja 650's drain plug. I'm gonna put that up on the screen. Torque specs are important because they stop you from under tightening your drain plug 
or over tightening your drain plug. If you under tighten your drain plug, uh, you're going to have like a slow oil drip. You're going to lose all your oil. The oil is going to end up falling right in front of where your back tire goes, which means you could end up falling. Uh, it could be a really bad time. If you over tighten your drain plug, it could potentially be even worse financially because now you're looking at, you know, you've basically screwed up the under part of your engine casing. So that can get really expensive. So to make sure that you're not screwing up um, how tight or how loose this bolt should be, you always want to use a torque wrench and have it set to the right torque. Step five is installing the new oil filter. But before you put that new oil filter in, take a good look at it. You're going to see that there's a part with a little rubber o-ring at the bottom. Get some fresh oil on your finger and run your finger around that o-ring to oil it up. The idea is that doing this will stop your oil filter from getting stuck. <laughs> and that's a good thing. You don't want your oil filter to get stuck because otherwise you're going to have to go through what I went through earlier in this video, which is definitely no fun. And again, even on the oil filter, you're going to want to use a torque wrench. I'll put the torque spec up on the screen so you guys can see it there. Make sure you set your torque wrench to that, put your oil filter on, and uh, you'll thank me the next time you change your oil when it'll be super easy. Step six is to pour the new oil in and then test the bike. So on the left side of the bike is the oil window or oil sight glass. It has a lot of different names depending on who you talk to. Basically, it lets you peek into the engine and see what the oil level is at. So there's some markers. There's two of them kind of running along the bottom. Those are your minimum. And there's two of them running closer to the top of the window. Those are your max. Basically, you want to have the oil level somewhere between the min and the max. So let's assume now you've got your oil poured in and you put the cap back on and you're looking around and there's nothing leaking out of it and the oil level's right in the middle of min and max and it was about 1.9 liters of oil that you put in there. What you're going to want to do, turn on the bike, fire it up, let it run for a good minute and then turn the bike back off. Give it a couple minutes, recheck that oil level, it should go back to the middle. If it's too low, even after a few minutes of sitting, you pour a little bit of oil back in there and if it's too high, you're going to loosen that drain plug off and let some oil come out. Remember, you should always be doing this stuff with your bike totally straight up and not on the center stand. And step seven is going to be really familiar. You're just going to put those fairings back on and go for a ride. So it's just the opposite of how you started. You're going to put those fairings back on the bike, get out for another rip. Keep in mind, you might smell a little bit of uh, oil burning at first. If that's just if any oil fell in your exhaust pipes or if you had oil on your gloves and they rubbed along your exhaust pipe, don't worry too much about that. You might even see a little bit of smoke. If there is any oil in your exhaust pipes, that'll burn off, the smell will go away, you won't see any smoke. Don't freak out. That's it for episode four of the $1,000 Ninja 650 rebuild series. If you guys wanna see how to drain the gas tank on the Ninja 650 or how to replace battery, or how I got started, or how I got the bike started after it was sitting for so many years, you might wanna check out some of my previous videos. If you have any questions about the Ninja 650, please leave me a comment, and if you like this video, please give it a like. Thanks guys, ride safe, catch you later.